Hey everyone, Kai here, and today I'm coming to you with another book review. And this time I'm reviewing The Queen, Queenie, by Candace Carty Williams. I finally read Queenie, and I even got dressed up for the occasion like the queen that Queenie is. I am color coordinating with this beautiful, fabulous book cover. This book cover, get into it, honey. Look at these box braids. Look at the queen on here. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. I thoroughly enjoyed this book. And I will be honest, I heard mixed reviews more good than not. But I, there were some people that called Queenie like a hot mess. And, and then there were people singing Queenie's praises. And again, more praises than not. And I am on the praise side. Queenie was super duper relatable. Um, her story was extremely, I've been there in some of the parts. And I love that even when you open the cover, there is a hashtag that says, I am Queenie. And I believe the author intentionally, she knew that a lot of black women or women in general would feel seen. This is the thing about reading fiction books. It's so hard to do the review and the unpacking that you want without giving away the plot, but I will do the best that I can to discuss all the major topics. The book opens up with Queenie. She's at the gynecologist and I thought it was super powerful that the author used this gynecologist, this sexual health clinic to open up the story of Queenie and it was in a lot of ways a foreshadow of the rest of the book. Queenie, she has an IUD inside of her and the doctors are trying to figure out what is happening. Um, and so that's how the book opened. I was also trying to figure out what is happening but you soon realize that Queenie is on a break from her relationship with her boyfriend and she's been with this boyfriend his name is Tom for about three years which is a very long time and they're on a break and now let me take some time to discuss the idea of a break okay that three-year mark in a relationship and I've been there you're kind of trying to figure out is the grass greener on the other side Ugh. I'm gonna get in trouble for this but I've been there before you know and sometimes that three-year mark is that decision point where you're like I really love this person but I don't know what's going on out there am I missing out and sometimes people are just happier than can be so this is sub completely subjective but she's in this relationship for three years and now they're on a break again I am pro break if that works for you to take time to figure out what you want not saying to take like three months like Queenie and Tom supposedly was doing but you know just to figure out what you kind of want I'm okay with that I know that's very controversial but a lot of people hear break and they think break up Queenie is kind of in denial about this the place in which her relationship is at and so the book takes you on a journey through her break um, she is having a moment with men where she is being very free and she's hurting and she's in pain and a lot of people teach you about love they never teach you about losing love so we go on this journey with her on how she's coping how she's handling what is her work life like what is her family like what is her friends like and the book is so well rounded in that it encompasses all of these areas in our lives that are important to us. Candace hit it on a nail. Every person in Queenie's life has so has stuck with me, has so much personality. They are they make the book. Like Queenie's inner circle make the book. My favorite characters were the grandmother and the grandpa the jamaican influence the jamaican grandparents favorite favorite i can relate queenie going to the fruit stands with her grandmother that was my whole childhood 
Flatbush Avenue, going to every fruit stand on Flatbush, picking mangoes, picking peppers. Oh my gosh, my Jamaican grandmother has completely, is such a foundation in my life. And it seems like Queenie's grandmother is the same. And so I find, found myself just reveling in the fact that I felt seen, like there is someone out there all the way across the pond, this is based in the UK, that has a family or a grandmother just like mine with the shopping cart. And Queenie even like going to um, the spot in Brixton trying to get bun and cheese, like bun and cheese is a thing. So um, it was so, it felt, I felt seen reading this book. Like I felt like the characters that were in her life, oh my gosh, her friends are so cute. They're called uh, the Corgis. And basically the Corgis are the queen, Queen Elizabeth's um, dogs. And I don't know, that could be taken the wrong way too, but so Queenie. I love that about Queenie. But her friends didn't care. Her friends kind of know, like she's so crazy and delusional, so whatever, which I love. But her friends are Cheske and Darcy. And they are her rock. They are her unit. They are her voices in her head that's telling her, that's straying her from doing the wrong things. But they're so supportive. I love Cheske. Cheske is her black friend that keeps it 100% real. You know, she is fabulous in her own right. A little hood, but keeps it real. Like if it comes to fighting one of the dudes that Queenie messed with that did her wrong she will fight them and then Darcy is very very sweet nice love Darcy loved Cheske and then there's Cassandra who you all will find out yeah we'll leave that there but she's like the psycho analytical one that's always like the therapist but a toxic therapist so I'll leave that there and then Queenie's family units grumpy grandpa Jamaican grandmother that's so freaking cute and oh she has an auntie she has a cousin she has a um, mom a estranged mother and we find out later why the mo mother and queenie like why they were estranged and it's really tragic she has such a family unit and then she has roommates and then she has the men in her life and the men are trash, 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 trash. And we go on this journey with her through these men, um, through navigating her 20s, also through navigating her job. Like she wants more, but she's so distracted by this break with Tom that it's kind of hindering her, hindering her from growth professionally. And so, I mean, the book tackled so many things. I made a list of all of the things that it tackled. Look at my notes. Look how much notes. I freaking adored this book. I think I would read it again. It did tackle Black Lives Matter. Um, it did, it has, Queenie is so aware of her blackness, but she only dates white men. And so they unpack the why of that, but it did, tackle um black lives she her and cheske are marching and fighting the good fight it does tackle casual racism and the nuances of dating a white or of having a white partner what that's like and she's constantly trying to figure out if the men that she dates the white men is she a fetish to them or do they really love her uh, it tackles mental health issues in a big way. It tackles anxiety. It tackles trauma. It tackles uh, your career. It tackles, like I mentioned in the beginning, sexual health. It tackles self-worth. And that is so powerful. And that's why I feel so seen in this book because there was a time in this book where Queenie couldn't even look herself in the mirror because she was so low and she felt so low about herself. And I feel like that was me in college. She tackles being the first. So being the first to go to college and how your West Indian family member, oh, you're so smart. Like she's smarty. Like <laughs> they said that to me all the time. Um, 
just being called you know queenie was kind of like the oreo and so unpacking that like what does that mean um but you know it talks about classical beauty and as black women sometimes we are made to feel like we're not classically beauty and queenie struggles queenie is a size 14 which is so powerful she's a size 14 she doesn't see herself as classically beautiful um and she struggles with her self-worth and you know feeling i don't know she's just struggling in so many areas the biggest thing that it tackles is knowing when you're spiraling and seeking help and there's many ways to seek help it could be through Jesus, your religion, your spirituality, it could be through therapy. And it was interesting because I love the part about Queenie deciding to go to a therapist and her grandmother took it as an insult to her. It was such an insult. And that was also my experience when I told my mom in college, I'm going to see a therapist. Um, my mom told me to pray. My mom told me, she kind of took it as it was an attack against her and it wasn't her parenting. She's the best mom ever. Um, and yes, I am praying like, yes, I get it. I'm talking to Jesus, but I still need extra help. So I thoroughly enjoyed this book. I encourage you to go get it. It's Queenie by Candace Carty. Williams, we have the same last name. I feel special. Um, maybe she's a long lost family member. Who knows? We're both Jamaican. Anyway, that's all I have for you all. I'll see you in the next video.